Patrick, you're having a usual dream of, I don't know, having a date with Chitara. It could happen. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Genealogy. <laughs> Number five. The Terminator. Now, as far as my top three criteria, the Terminator does fit the list quite nicely. Pay attention. His motives are pretty frightening. The Terminator's an infiltration unit. Go back in time. Kill the mother of the leader of the resistance before he's born. You've been targeted for termination. To ensure the destruction of humanity and the rise of the robots led by Skynet. Pretty frightening outcome. A lot at stake here. Not to mention his powers. He's practically indestructible. Of course, I'm a Terminator. You can shoot him with pretty much anything and you can't be stopped. Cyborgs don't feel pain. I do. Only pain. He's an unfeeling, uncaring machine. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear. That only focuses on his goal. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. And will stop at nothing to achieve it. And it absolutely will not stop until you are dead. Sounds like he works for Disney. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. Am I a hero? I really can't say, but yes. <laughs> and played by a very imposing actor in Arnold Schwarzenegger. The famous comedian Arnold Braunschweiger. Whose accent and look both make him terrifying and hilarious at the same time. Talk to the hand. <laughs> and even if you do decide to somehow burn him or destroy him, pull the skin off his face, you will reveal an even more terrifying look. A look that looks similar to me, only in robot form. I'm a cybernetic organism. <laughs> and while he is a malevolent, unrelenting force, the one thing that I, Skeletor, find puzzling about the Terminator is what's his fascination with constantly taking biker gang's clothes? Your clothes. Give them to me. Now. Let me come on. Tell me, Terminator. What is it? Is it some kind of biker gang leather fetish you got going on? I mean, sure, it wouldn't be quite as imposing if he was to, I don't know, go back in time, land straight in a soccer game, and steal a soccer dad's clothes. Sarah Connor, where is she? I'll be back. But still, does the T-800 have a fetish for biker clothes? I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six-pack. I'm not a pervert. <laughs> Or does he just like stripping bikers? I don't know. I do not want to touch his ass. However, that notwithstanding, it's pretty obvious as to why Terminator is number five on my list. And deservedly so. Wow. All right. Number, number four. four. Lopan, the, the spirit, spirit sorcerer. sorcerer. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate evil spirit. From the movie Big Trouble in Little China. Are you crazy? Is that your problem? It's funny, if there could be that much trouble in Little China, can you imagine what goes on in Big China? What are we sitting around talking Chinese history for? Get to the goddamn point. <laughs> now, Lo Pan for me is quite the frightening villain, for multiple reasons. But his motive, Lo Pan is a spirit sorcerer, meaning he is non-corporeal. Due to a curse, he has no body. Ching Dai. Make me flesh again. Which is why he must break the curse by getting a green-eyed girl to marry him. He had to find this certain girl of, of his prophecy and marry her. I think I would be happy and my curse would be lifted. Now that sounds simple, right? Yeah. But not so simple in Little China, apparently. This really pisses me off to no end. Now remember, this predates online dating. I mean, sure, if it was today, he could just, you know, go online and just swipe left until he comes across a green-eyed girl. Indeed. Back in the 80s, that was a lot harder. He was supposed to put out an ad. Lopan, evil sorcerer, looking for a relationship with green-eyed girl, preferably Asian. His eyes flash like emerald lightning. <laughs> Again, probably a tough sell for him, as he wasn't the most handsome man around. Ah? And that's putting it mildly. Peddler David Lopan in person. <laughs> now his goal, of course, once he gets back his body, was to take over the universe. And you know what? I believe he could do it. Yeah. Especially when you factor in how powerful his minions were. And now for some more bad news. I mean, yes, he himself was magical, but what I really feared about Lopan were his three minions he calls the Storms. Of course, named after, you know, Storms. <laughs> Rain. Thunder. And lightning. And come on, you can't tell me that these characters did not inspire some of the characters from Mortal Kombat, especially Raiden. Raiden. Raiden my buddy! <laughs> <laughs> Although, Raiden in this version is evil, not quite a benevolent god. 
Shang Tsung wins. As terrifying as they were, he had even more terrifying looking minions around him. But this gets worse, come on. Especially a couple of creatures. He had a creature that looked like Beast Man, except a way more terrifying than Beast Man. <laughs> Ah, but you don't impress me. <laughs> and this creature who, I don't know, if he inspired Mad Balls. Mad Balls, Mad Balls, Mad Balls, gross for one, gross for Mad Balls. But can you imagine coming across this creature in a dark alleyway? My God, no, please, what is that? Now that's the stuff real nightmares are made of. Mad Balls, Mad Balls, Mad Balls. I bet you'll never look at Mad Balls again. What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's for these reasons why I, Skeletor, have Lopan, the spirit sorcerer. That's my number four. I will have both of you roll off to the hell where people are skinned alive. It's that simple, understand? All right. Number, number three. three. Freddy, Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. Watch this. Now, of course, I had to have this character on my list. I mean, let's be honest, he is truly one of the most iconic villains of the 80s and definitely worthy of being a top three on my list. No, it's scary enough to have to face off against an evil villain while you're awake. What's even more terrifying is having to fight an evil villain while you're asleep and in your dreams. This is just a dream. He isn't real. And you can't even control the dream you're in. Welcome to Wonderland. I mean, picture it. You're having a usual dream of, I don't know, having a date with Chitara, for instance. I've been really trying, baby. It could happen. Oh, I believe anything is possible. <laughs> well, it's my dream. I don't care what you think. Nobody is perfect. Well, my dream until I'm just about to, you know, get intimate with Chitara. Suddenly, he heard claws turn into sharp knives, and then she starts laughing at me <laughs> with that dark, horrible laugh. <laughs> and then suddenly, a once beautiful Chitara morphs into the evil burnt face of Freddy Krueger. Come to Freddy. And I'm about to kiss that thing. I'm your boyfriend now. Forget about it. Nothing could be more terrifying than that. <laughs> yeah, sure, he'll try to kill me, but come on. We all know how much Freddy Krueger likes toying with people in their nightmares. This is my favorite. Giving them the most ultimate worst case scenario. Oh, you better speak up. And for me, Skeletor, that ranks pretty high up there as worst case scenario. <laughs> well, that's end. You know, maybe I'm just about to defeat He-Man and conquer Castle Grayskull and suddenly he just appears and takes that away. You're a loser, Skeletor. I don't believe in fairy tales. <laughs> yeah, that would be disappointing and angry as well. However, you get my drift. <laughs> this is why, for me, Freddy Krueger ranks up there as number three on my list. Tell him Freddy sent you. <laughs> All right, now for my number, number two. two. Lord, Lord of, of Darkness Dark from Legend. For me, Lord of Darkness is one of the most terrifying looking villains. I mean, he's definitely modeled after Satan himself. I am Satan. And I, Skeletor, contest that Lord of Darkness here is probably the most accurate and best depiction of the devil ever put to screen. Most are too afraid to see it. Now, aside from the fact that he looks like evil incarnate with those big giant horns sticking out of his head, which for me is kind of impractical. I mean, as imposing as looking like a walking bull is, I just can't imagine it being very comfortable. Hey, Quagmire, you want to- ah! ah! You definitely need to work out his neck muscles in the gym for hours just to support those horns. Do I make you horny, baby? Do I make you randy? No. <laughs> but what made him even more terrifying was the fact that he was played by Tim Curry, an actor who even without makeup looks terrifying. <laughs> now despite his looks, he was also powerful as he manipulates dark magic, not to mention his whole goal is not just to conquer the world, but he wants to conquer the world and turn it into a frigid eternal darkness. The sun sets forever. You've stolen my dreams away. How dare you? 
No, no, I'm evil. And yes, I'd like to conquer the world, but I don't want to plunge it into an eternal darkness. Damn you! Not all of us. Damn. First of all, I don't like the cold. I don't like it. So that doesn't suit me. That's why I live next to a volcano. I would hate it if Lord Darkness took over the world. You disgust me. If you still doubt the reason for why he's number two on my list, picture yourself alone in your room, maybe combing your hair in your mirror or something. And then suddenly, this giant, red, devil-like monster just steps out of your mirror, then puts you in a dancing gown and wants to dance with you. Just to please me. Ah, no, I don't want to dance with Tim Curry. I'll get you a satanic mechanic. Anything but that. <laughs> now that, my friends, is top two terrifying. Every wolf suffers, flees. <laughs> All right, now before I get to the number one on my list, I'm going to bring up a couple of honorable mentions. These are characters that I contemplated putting on my list, but I ultimately decided to leave them out. Chucky Ch from Child's Child. Play. Hi. I'm Chucky, ha ha ha. And yes, the thought of you encountering a talking doll in the middle of the night in a dark alleyway is terrifying. Amazing, isn't it? Which is why I had thought of putting him on my list, but I ultimately left him out because, you know, how scary is an evil villain that you could punt across the room at will? Make <laughs> the size that counts. Jared, the, the Goblin King, King from the Labyrinth. Oh. Now I know a lot of you are like, what? Why would you even be considering him? Shut up! Normally I wouldn't, but it's not that Jareth himself is terrifying. I mean, yes, he's magical and all that stuff, but what he stuffs in his pants... It's a present. Nah, I don't want to meet it in a dark alleyway. What a nice surprise. <laughs> well, love. Next, Pinhead, Pinhead from Hellraiser. Hell he's got pins in his head. Now, of course, Pinhead's one of the most terrifying looking villains of all time and probably should have been on my list. But the reason why I left him out is, I don't know, he reminded me too much of Spycor. Spycor. Well, let's see how he didn't like your... Ow! <laughs> also, I started realizing how inconvenient having spikes on his face must actually be. That thing must snag on everything around him. You're not the first to say that. By the time he actually catches up with you, he's probably got all kinds of things stuck to it. He's like a walking urchin. Not quite. Sticks to everything. <laughs> I'll get you. The minute I get all this stuff off my face. Yeah. Blast it. And that's the reason why he was only an honorable mention. Oh, no. Next is Hans Gruber. Yes, I know all of you are going to be yelling at me. You've got to at least mention Hans Gruber, Skeletor. Well, yes, as far as evil villains are concerned, he does have one of the best, if not the best, characters in 80s cinema history. You're very perceptive. I mean, he's very efficient and intelligent. It's obvious you're not some dumb schmuck. And, you know, yes, most lists would probably put him very high. You're amazing. You figured this all out already. However, I just don't find him very frightening. Please, God, no! I mean, for me, the best thing he's ever done was get rid of Guy Smart. Over here. Thank you, thank you! This is Guy Smiley! Capiche? Talk about a character that terrified me. Am I right? <laughs> I don't want to encounter that smile in the laneway. Hans, Bobby, I'm your white knight. What are you saying? So kudos to Hans Gruber for that. Happy trails, Hans. <laughs> also, not making my list and nothing and no from the never read story. story. What is the nothing? I had to at least contemplate the nothing because the thought of nothing chasing after you, I don't know, scared me. Like a despair. And at the same time, confused me. A hole? A hole would be something. No, it was nothing. <laughs> well, as terrifying as the prospect of nothing is, nothing did win at the end. It's all that remains of my vast empire. And nothing happened. You're lying. The story just went on because apparently it's never ending. The never ending story, a movie about nothing. It's about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and last on my list, Frank Langella's depiction of me. Skeletal! Come on, if you thought I was going to go through a whole evil villains list and not even mention me, Skeletor. Here is my response. Well, you haven't been paying close attention to my channel. All the powers of the universe will be vested in me. Me! Of course, I'm going to make an appearance at some point. Now, well, that movie was horrible. You can't tell me that horrible mask isn't frightening. I don't think so. 
Let's be honest, Frank Langella smacked the hell out of that character. It is my destiny. It is my right. <laughs> he seemed to be the only one who cared about the film. Thank you for that bit of philosophy. So, of course I had to include him in the list. If we dress like this, no one will recognize us. Oh, and yes, I, I forgot. For those Star Trek fans out there, probably still yelling at me. Khan! Yes, yes, Khan is on the list. It's logical. So, there you go. These were the characters that didn't quite make the cut. Is that all you gotta say? Alright, now, without further ado, Skeletors, number, number one, one most terrifying villain from an 80s, 80s film. film. None, None other, than other than Darth, Darth Vader. Vader. Don't act so surprised. Now, I was contemplating whether or not Darth Vader qualified to be on the list, because technically he's a product of the 70s. It's Darth Vader, watch out! And he's got a lightsaber! But then I thought about it for a while, and then I came to the conclusion that yes, yes he does. Don't fail me again. And the reason why I qualified him for it was because for me, Skeletor, his most terrifying moment came from an 80s film. And in fact, I think his most terrifying moments, period, came from The Empire Strikes Back. No! Well, that's if you don't include the prequels. Liar! <laughs> and this team here. I don't like Sam. It's coarse. And it gets everywhere. And that was terrifying, but not for the reasons that would qualify him to be number one on this list. He's jealous. Maybe on another list. Number one most cringy villains of all time. He's as clumsy as he is stupid. But why he's my number one, and why I find him to be the most terrifying villain of the 80s is, well, yes, the mere sight of him coming at you, whether a dark alley or anywhere, is enough to make you pee your pants, but it's also his power. If you only knew the power of the dark side. I mean, yes, he looks dark, he looks mysterious, and he looks imposing, and definitely frightening. But he's got the power to back that up. One of the most terrifying things he did was when he would just choke out his own minions for failure. Sometimes I wish I had that power, I could just- You disappoint me, merman! <laughs> oh no! Skeletor! I would love to have that power! No parties! But yes, that is quite terrifying. His force is so powerful, you don't even have to be in the same room for him to do that to you. Let's move down to flight speed and we're preparing to- I mean, can you imagine being one of his minions and then after watching him just choke out your boss and be like, All right, now you're the new boss! You aren't the man now. Yet. You're like, no, no, I, I, I don't deserve the promotion. Give it to, give it to Charlie here. He's been doing really good things in accounting. I saved a life, my own. No one would want the job. You have failed me for the last time. And can you imagine how useful that power would be? Especially if you got crank calls. Hello, is this Darth Vader? <laughs> Hi, we work for Imperial Duck Cleaning, and we were wondering if you have any ducks that need cleaning. Your lack of telephone etiquette disturbs me. <laughs> You could have just said no! Consider your number blocked. <laughs> Quite terrifying, I say. And definitely worthy to be my number one most frightening and evil villain of the 1980s. Search your feelings, you know it to be true. Alright, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this list. Now I know it might not jive with the rest of your lists that you have at home, and if you have a different list, please let me Skeletor know. Who did I leave out on my list, and who would you put as number one on your list? Whether you agree with me or not, we can all agree on one thing. The 1980s had some of the most iconic villains of all time. Anyway, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Cineology. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.